So welcome back to the Dawn Show. Super Bowl 48, two weeks away, and divorcing your cell phone. Back with Natasha Warner and Ken Dunnick here. So first of all, did you watch? Well, I know you had to watch, right, Ken? Every last minute. night. <laughs> I want to say, how about that call last night? Because that's all I can say from here on out. So, you know, I feel, you know, going back to talking about Chicago, you know, I, I know that, that Harbaugh is sometimes known as a whiner, yeah. but he has reason to be a whiner today. He, that was a bad ref call. Well, it was a rule, you know, it wasn't really a call, it was a rule that was enforced. Why they have that rule in place, I have no idea, but, uh, you know, it, two exciting uh, games yesterday. The old school game of, you know, Tom Brady versus Peyton Manning in the first game, the old guard, and then you have the, the new kids on the block with, uh, with the Seattle quarterback and, and uh, uh, Ka Colin Kaepernick, uh, the running style of quarterbacks. Uh, I just thought it was a, a great dichotomy of two styles. And, you know, the two best teams are going to play in the Super Bowl, which is somewhat unusual, too, because a lot of times you'll see one of the lower seeds come in and sneak in there. Mm -hmm. But uh, should be a great game. And it's going to be in New Jersey, which is, uh, you which know, is one awesome. of the great yeah. things, right? A cold Who weather, knew? cold weather Super Bowl. So. And this is the first, right? It's the first of its kind because there's no dome. Right. They right? had one in Detroit, but obviously, but you know, there, there was a dome there. So I'm, I'm hoping for snow. You know, when you think, <laughs> when, no, when you think back of the history of the NFL, one of the great memories I have of, of, of as a kid is the Ice Bowl in Green Bay when, you know, you could see their breath and Dallas was playing Green Bay for the NFL championship. And, it, it was just such a vi vivid memory, and, and this is going to be different. You know, it's not, it's not Miami, it's not L.A., it's not Arizona. You're going to have to play in the elements, which I think is going to hurt Peyton Manning a little bit. Well, I was going to ask you, how did yeah. that make, how when you played in the, in the uh, NFL, how, yeah. did it, how did you feel when you had to play in, in temperatures like you that? You don't feel the cold when you're on the field. You don't, because you're so into exactly your job and what you're doing. And the adrenaline now, and everything. What, yeah, when you get to the sideline, and you stand around right. for a while, that's when you feel the cold. But when you're on the field, you don't, wow. it, it doesn't really matter how cold it is. So there's an injury, there's a risk of more injuries, right? I mean, is Well, there? I think, you know, your body, it's tough to limber your body up as much. But, you know, a guy like Peyton Manning, who is, I believe, 37 or 38 years old, you know, doesn't, will not do as well in the cold as a younger mm -hmm. guy. There was a game uh, a few years ago with Brett Favre in the cold, and he just, you know, couldn't play like he was capable of just because his body wouldn't right. react to those cold temperatures. So, you know, for that reason, I think I give Seattle a little bit of the mm -hmm. edge in the game, although I'm rooting for Denver and Peyton. So yeah, we'll see too. how it plays out. Yeah. But so, so about the rule, so in other words, even though we have cameras, that particular rule is that they just can't, they can't go back and review it. Yeah, they say once there's a fumble called, uh, or, Actually, I'm, I'm a little confused because I heard one rule and then I heard another one this morning, so I'm not exactly sure what they were talking about, but they said, was, you know, once a fumble is called on the field, it's not reviewable, which to me makes no sense because right. they can review it in the end zone. So why would you be able to review it there and not, uh, in, and not on the field? But again, uh, the, the, the review system in the NFL is supposed to correct egregious, indisputable errors. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, and that certainly was the case yeah, yesterday. I mean, somebody broke, you know, broke his leg yeah. over the thing, and, and oh, then, that was, and that, oh, and oh the, they kept showing that over and my over. My husband right? kept putting his hands yeah, so my no, boys couldn't see the was break. Ugly. It was like, oh, he, don't show it anymore. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, uh, Bowman is one of the top linebackers in the game, if not the top, and uh, that's going to be a total reconstructive knee, I think. Wow. I mean, that was, that was painful to look at. Now, what, what, what's your take? Because I always, I always look at the psychology of the game. I mean, I think sometimes it's 50% psychological. And so when you see the rant after, afterwards in the post game with Sherman and he mm -hmm. was going off like that, what effect does that have moving forward then? When you're saying, I'm the best and blah, 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 blah. Well, it's a macho game, yeah. number yeah. one. And normally what they like to do, uh, with the exception of the, the game day crew, is that they normally like to give these guys a cooling off period. Mm -hmm. Because really, when you're, on the fi uh, when you're on the field, it's kill or be killed. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the truth. I was a totally different person on the football field than I, uh, I was sitting here. So, uh, and that's just the nature of the game. So uh, when you come off the field, when your adrenaline is sky high, mm -hmm and somebody puts a microphone in your face, it's really Hard not the most fair thing to do. And if you noticed some of the interviews later, he had calmed down yeah. quite a bit. And, you know, he's an educated guy. He's a Stanford grad. You know, right. he, you know he's, he's really, he's got some great credentials. I'm sure he regrets that uh, 
incident with Aaron Andrews yesterday, but you know, stuff his happens. mother's calling Richard. <laughs> yes. What behave, was that? Behave yourself. <laughs> exactly. Proud of yourself. <laughs> well, speaking of the phone calls, so what? It, what's all this about divorcing the cell phone? So Natasha, you had a seven day or a 10 day fast yeah, 10 from day. your cell phone. Mm -hmm. I um, decided just on a whim that I was going to just kind of give it a break and I, you know, no Facebook, no Instagram. And so I did check emails just to make sure people weren't trying to catch me on, you know, for business, but I just had to let it go because I felt like I was spending time at home and when your three year old grabs your arm, mommy, can you put your cell phone down and watch a movie with us? I felt like that was too much. So I just had to, you know, give myself a break and step back and, you know, put some rules and guidelines in place when I come home, you know, no, no Facebook or just post in and then get off. So it was time for a break. And for you, Ken? Well, unfortunately, uh, you know, I live and die by my cell phone because I run a business and a lot of the times the deals are transacted via email and if I'm out selling or whatever, I have to be, right. stay plugged in. So. Uh, unfortunately, it's a necessary evil for me, but uh, yeah, I mean, when I heard about the topic of the cell phone divorce, I was pretty yeah. excited about it because, uh, as I said, I'm enjoying having my phone off here so it doesn't ring in the middle of our conversation, but uh, it, they're a necessary evil, you know, yeah. unfortunately, in today's society from, what did from we a business do before? standpoint. What did we do before cell phones? You know what? Phones? I can remember uh, my first sales job when I retired, I would have to plan my sales day around uh, uh, pay phones, right. you know, and make sure that, you know, I got here, I could call or found a hotel mm -hmm. where I could make some phone calls. It seems kind of crazy that, you know, uh, we live in an instant gratification That's society crazy. where we need information like that and nothing else will do anymore, so. See, I've, my, my boys always have, I have more games on my phone, on my iPhone right. than anything else. So I have the excuse of they usually have my phone. Uh -huh. right. So then my husband will say, didn't you check, didn't you get? And so I'll say, well, check for me. <laughs> so he's like my, pr <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm the opposite. I never married the thing. So maybe I need to get married to well, my that, cell that's phone. That's another topic. What, at what age are you going to give your boys oh, cell yeah. phones? I mean, they're coming yeah. to the age where they're probably asking for that. Well, so. they have the mini for Christmas. Tablets. They got the mini tablets, the mini iPhone iPad. or whatever iPhone. Yeah. Pads, so they have those I'm anti right. I, I'm against it I'm against the video games there's actually research that says that with kids it does desensitize them in life you, so you know I'm what? against it and I agree with that we don't have for our younger ones but we did um, have a, a divorce for our daughter you know the 11 year old but um, no Instagram and no cause she was just the focus wasn't there but the one thing I will say is I felt like we need to introduce it to our younger ones because they are going to be behind I think you know, with technology, and I'm not saying video games and killing people, but just at least um, learning, you know, those learning exercises. Yeah. I just don't want them to not, um, you know, to be so far behind in technology. There's good and bad in all yes, of Yes, exactly. Right. Ken's thoughts on that on the other side of the break. We'll be right back. Back here on the Dawn Show talking to uh, Natasha and Ken. So, Ken, let's pick it up with you. We are talking about cell phones and cell phone addictions and all that stuff. What was your rule? I mean, you have daughters you have triplet girls right i have four daughters including a set of triplets and we had actually had everybody over over the holidays and and we had a rule where, you know it's rare for us to get together for dinner as a group and there was no cell phone rule at the table and it was great because we actually we talked and communicated and had and had a good time and if you go to a restaurant these days everybody's on the cell phone yeah. i mean you know you got to get that face to face back i think I agree with you. I mean, that's our rule at dinner time. We're at the table, no devices. Yeah. Turn your devices off. Exactly. Devices on vibrate. <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I think that's for grown-ups. Exactly. That should be for grown-ups, too. It's a, sure. it's a great mm -hmm. rule. So uh, what's your prediction on the Super Bowl? Do you, do you think? Well, I'm leaning towards Seattle, but I'm rooting for Denver, even though I really don't root for football teams because <laughs> I look at it clinically. But uh, I do think Seattle's defense and the cold weather is going to affect Peyton a little bit. I think that uh, that'll give them the edge. All right, you got the final thought. Ken, Natasha, thank you so much. Thanks, great to be here. Have a good one, everybody.